All right. We just gonna have to deal with what we got. Check one, two. Okay. Yes, we are. Yes. <clears throat> well, hello, everybody. This is Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. Pastor who? Charles Emery. Charles Hallelujah. Emery. Hallelujah. That's your name, Charles Emery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, this <laughs> This is original. I just, I just can't wait to every week here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM to be in the studio with Charles Emery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Pastor Charles, I see on the other side of you, we have a very special guest. Would you like to introduce her? Amen, sir. We have one of my uh, our prophets from Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church under the leadership of Pastor Kuna Anderson. We have uh, Sister April Price, a mighty woman of God, who uh, the Lord put in my heart to invite to be a guest on our show today. So I'm just so excited that she uh, accepted the invitation and came to join in this fire with us today. Amen, amen. Now I'm waiting, ready, ready for her to sing a song the way you introduced her. <laughs> How you doing, my sister? I'm doing good. Praise God. God. I'm doing good. I'm doing You see what I have to put up with every I week? See. I, I mean, see. but you know what? Uh, what I really love about uh, being here every week, uh, our engineer, Sean, you know, he, he, you saw early what he had to put up with him. Yeah. He tears the microphones up. He never can get his stuff in order. But once we get him going, he's all right. Yeah. You God ready? have mercy. I know. Are you ready? Let's, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's I'm do this. Ready. You know, Pastor, uh, what we were sharing yes. last week, it's been a blessing uh, the month of February. And we, uh, uh, Prophetess? Yes. Give me the last name of the concept. Price. Prophet is Oh, like Price, price is Price. price. Yes. Oh, the Price is Right. We're going to find out. We're going to make a deal. <laughs> make a deal. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that we said, uh, and we both agreed on, this month is, uh, we call it the month of women. Ladies, the women in Christ. And it's a blessing to have you with us today. And uh, I had a chance to meet with you yesterday, and I was just overwhelmed. And I'm so excited to have you with us today. So we want to get into this here. Uh, our title today is Women in the Bible. The Women in the Bible. And what role do they play? Oh, as leadership, some women are pastors, some are apostles, you know. So women play a, a major role in the ministries. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, and uh, I know you shared with us, uh, uh, with our guest is a prophet. And it's just such a, a blessing. You know, I want to just start off something, uh, Pastor, and um, uh, my, dear, my dear sister, yes, sir. Uh, Price. I got to think of Frederick, then I can get it. Yeah, I think of oh, Frederick. Of, okay. hey, <laughs> Price is right. But, you know, uh, to start off what women have done in the Bible and how powerful they were, uh, let's start with Eve. Okay. You know, Eve was a very... Uh, 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 Ooh, very, well, how can I put this? The mother before Mary? Yeah, yeah. yeah she was the mother. She was the mother. And we find that uh, she was the first woman and is the first woman that was ever mentioned in the Bible. Yes, it is. Why is that? Because in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden to have dominion over the earth. Mm, okay, okay. You know, and she was the first woman. Okay, what would you have to say about that, dear? I would say she made the first impact on the world. She was the woman that started it all. Come on, she now, started, come on. She started the first rebellion. Ooh, ooh, okay. She started the first disobedience. <laughs> yeah, she did. Come on, come on now. And so she she began what, what we know now as being born into sin. She started that, although Adam was the one that... God gave the command to. She was the one who started that process. Yes, 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 yes. You know, like what, and what I did, sister, say Eve disobeyed a clear commandment from God. Like her husband Adam, they were created as perfect humans. Yes. But you know, uh, uh, my question to both of you all is that why is it in our today time that when God give us a command to do something? Uh, that's going to benefit us. Here we go, pushing God out of the way and doing our own thing. Wonder why we keep doing that. 
You want to answer that? <laughs> Let me take a stab. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that thing is called flesh and humanity and carnality. Uh -huh. And the Bible said that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So a lot of times, if we're not led by the Spirit, we cannot walk in the ways of the Spirit. Uh -huh. So our first mind is to think human. Our first mind is to think with the carnal thoughts. And so we try to we try to think ahead of God in many instances. When he tells us to do something and we are not spirit-led and we don't go into what God wants us to go into, we tend to try to do it on our own. We lean to our own understanding. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I love when you say we are not uh, spirit-led. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm hearing you correctly, we have to have a connection with Christ. Yes. And, and if it doesn't line up, with the word of God, then there's that disconnect. Yes. But let, let, let's look at this here. Just, just, just a little bit. I just want to. Look, I, I, I'm, I'm searching for something with Eve. Yeah. Okay. The, I'm searching something with Eve. Was it that she was disobedient to Adam, not listening to Adam? Well, you, you understand. If you read the scriptures, Adam was with her when the enemy beguiled her, mm -hmm. you know, tricked her to be deceptive and to go against God's command. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't indicate anything that he, he deterred her from being disobedient. It says when the serpent came there, he was talking directly to her and she, you know, her husband was with her, so he didn't rise up against her. He had the authority, he had the power to shut the enemy down, but he just let the enemy have his way. Why? Because he relinquished his authority. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. good. That's good. That's, that's good, Pastor. That's good. That's and that's what I was searching for. So in other words, we cannot blame it on the woman. No. It's the man. Absolutely. I hope y'all caught that, listeners. I, you know, and you fellas that 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 uh uh, to be protectors of your wife, your significant other, or your yes. family, you we have to know that God has given us a covering. He yes. has given us a strict command to protect yes. our kingdom, what he has given us. You know, so in other words, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. What can we have actually learned from Eve, Pastor? Well, one point is the danger of dwelling on wrong desires. You know, and that, that brings me to this point. Uh, as I was doing this teaching recently on seducing spirits, the enemy, he was able to seduce her into rebellion. You think about what I'm yes. talking about. He seduced her by enticing her with something that was pleasant to the eye. Because mm -hmm. it says in the scripture that she saw the tree and it was pleasant to the eyes, and then she ate of the tree that God told him not to do. So the danger of wrong desires can lead you into a place of darkness, it leads to a place of assassination of your purpose, your vision, the dreams that God has for your life. Um, It'll stop you in your tracks because you're not listening to God's voice. You're listening to your own desires. Yes. I like that. Sister uh, Price, yes, for, for, the, Price <laughs> for, for, for the women of today, this is, this is about women. How would you help our young ladies today? Uh, to to understand their role, the authority that they have, uh, you know, because you know uh, that was a question that was asked to me, and, and I hear it all the time. Even when it comes to women in the pulpit, mm -hmm. being pastors, you know, they 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 face a lot of problems. But my yes. thing is, I always say, if it went for the women, every church in the world would be closed. That's true. Mm -hmm. What would what would you say to our listeners? to help them understand the role and how powerful God see you all as his daughter. Yes. Well, as being a, a woman created by God, and the first thing we know that God did something special with Eve. He took her from Adam. He yes. took her from the man. Now, he could have made dirt. He could have brought her from the, the earth like he did Adam, but he made a special, this was like a special operation for her, which shows that we as women have power. We mm. have a power that we have to tap into, but we cannot abuse the power. Come on now, come See, on. See, sometimes on. women, we, we get it twisted and we think that we have to yield that power over another person, and specifically men. We have our place, but we also... I have to recognize that we have powers to build kingdoms and bring them down. Absolutely. A woman can make a man strong or make him weak. She can she can turn his light on or turn it all the way off. Oh, y'all hear that? Y'all hear That's that? That's good. Y'all hear that? That's good. Because that, Pastor, 
you know, I just heard what she said. I can either help the man build him up or bring him down. But that was another woman that was in the Bible. And her name was Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh, yeah. Come on, Pastor. You know, Jezebel, you know, she was a woman that, that, that Ahab gave the authority to. You know, because he was a king, but yet he didn't rise up with backbone to take over what God wanted him to do as a king to reign and govern the people. So Jezebel took authority. Why? Because of the demonic spirit that was in her, made her rise up against her husband. You know, I was thinking of this, uh, how, like, at one point Ahab was, was going to take some land from another person, but because of his weaknesses, of his strength, he didn't have the authority to rise up against the man and say, I'm taking this land. Mm -hmm. So Jezebel said, who is this man? You know, he said, well, he won't give me this land. So she rises up, goes to the individual, and takes their land, something he should have done. But because she was had the authority, she do what she wanted to do. And that's how the enemy does in the church today. Women rise up with that Jezebel spirit. They take over yes. a church if you let them. You know, they will take over the leadership and destroy everything that God is building up in that house. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, you know, when you, you mentioned church, you know, I was looking at my notes. It says, due to the past era, when women were treated as second-class citizens in, in every arena, many assumed that the biblical restriction of the role of a woman in the church are past of that sex, sexual mentality. So do you think women feel that they have to be so dominant due to uh, uh, feeling second-class? Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, because one thing, if the man is not going to rise up in his right position to take the leadership role that God ordained him to be in, who won't take it? The woman. Because you give it to her. Just You know, just like in your house, a husband and a wife. If the wife runs the house, she's going to run you because you letting her run you. You know, I, I've done that for years when I was married, when I first was married. I, w I let my wife pretty much control whatever I did, you know, and what I should, could and could not do. Why? Because I gave her the authority. Until God started showing me my role as a, as a man of God, not only a man of God, but a leader in the house that, hey, this is how it's supposed to be structured. If you don't know the structure of the way God builds the house, you labor in vain who build it. So my sister, what would you say uh, about that women being very dominant? Even in the home and in the church, how would you feel about that? Or well, they, they mean they help me, Holy Spirit. You in a church, and here's uh, the female pastor. Now, me myself, if she is led by God, you know, uh, I, I can receive her because if, if yesterday when we was talking, I, I, I shared this here, and this is my firm belief. I'm a pastor. Yes. They're leaving my church because I'm a man. They're leaving. Mm -hmm. You a pastor, female, and they're coming into your house. Mm -hmm. They're coming to the house of the Lord. Who do you think God is going to be satisfied with? Me being a man, you being a woman. But you are not supposed to be able to have authority in that church. Break that down to me because you said something very interesting uh, when we had our meeting yesterday about women in the church. Now, this is not all women. I want y'all to get this right. We are yes. not talking about all women. But there are some women that are in the church have totally forgotten their place. Yes, yes, there are. And um, what happens is when, as we're looking even at Jezebel, the, the key thing about her personality and what it said about her was that she did not worship Jehovah. She was mm -hmm. in a place of position of authority, but she did not worship Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So we have women in leadership. They are in positions of authority, but they are not worshiping God to the extent that they're keeping the order. There is an order. God has an order for his people, for the church. And a lot of times women, when they are in leadership, they abuse that authority. So when you're exerting your authority over a man, a man, your husband, um, men in general, and you're not worshiping God to the extent that he's directing your path. He's telling you how to how to function in that capacity. Mm -hmm. You have we have an obligation to function according to our positions in Christ. So there's an order. 
There's an established order. There's a mandate that we can't get out of line. We can't get out of alignment. And so women, oftentimes, when they're in positions of authority, because they're not yielded to the spirit, they get out of alignment and they overexert their authority uh, in the wrong places. So you have women that disrespect their husbands. You have women that um, openly rebuke their husbands, which is out of line, out of order. It's not correct. It's not biblical. And this is what Jezebel did. She was in that position, and she abused her authority. You know, I, I love that. I love that, my sister, because when I heard Pastor Charlton saying that, he spoke of that, first of all, she, and I think it was you. I mean, it was you or him, but I heard someone say she did not worship Jehovah. She did not worship God. So that <laughs> takes me to she must have been worshiping Baal. She was worshiping Baal. Come on. Come on. And okay. it makes a difference. Yes, yes. And and, and 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 we're saying that you know uh, our title today is the the women of the Bible and what was their role and that was a time that God has given us and give, has given us these great women yes. but for a woman that's been with us today in the studio you know I'm so honored to have you with us because I heard <coughs> you say the Bible contains God guideline there's a guideline and a yes. gender and a, a, a order that we should oh, follow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I, I I read something, Pastor, where it was saying that in God's guideline, it's okay that a woman, you know, uh, has a part in the ministry. Mm -hmm. But if I'm hearing the two of you correctly, is that she has to stay in her order. Pastor, you know, we was just talking about uh, 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 Joyce Myers, yes. mm -hmm. you know, yes. which is a, a, a minister that travels the world, known worldwide. Yes. But one thing that I noticed about her, she never put her husband, Dave, David, to right. shame. Mm -hmm. and, and I found that, it, and I'm speaking of men too, pastors. I'm yes. speaking of yes. men in general, men in the home. If God have given you a partner, your helpmate, someone that you say that you love, you have to continue in life of what Christ yeah, has given yeah. us is to stay in that guideline. And I think one of the problems that I find that people having, even in the churches and in their home, they're steady listening to what somebody else is saying, what the mm -hmm. world is saying. So other words, you know, uh, you know, she thinks she's all of that. Well, you know, you need to, to, to be the head you know, of the church. You're the pastor. And what happens there is that it brings a spiritual separation. Yeah, Just yeah, like Adam yes. and Eve, that spiritual yeah, treason, yes. that, that spiritual yeah. death, yeah. that disconnect. You know, uh, uh, that's I, another point. Too. Come on, come on. Um, come on. Come it on. says, what does she do? Uh -huh. And I like this because it defines the attitude of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. It says, Queen Jezebel was domineering, ruthless, and violent. She promoted Baal worship and sexual immorality associated with it. At the same time, she tries to eliminate the worship of the true God, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. You know what? And that's what happens today. The same spirit is running rampant in the churches yes. today, yes. you know, to where the enemy is promoting his his abilities. He's promoting his gender. He's supporting his, his kingdom in the house of God because mm -hmm. we're not standing on the word of God and following God's word to the full degree that God called us out of darkness to be in the light. Yes. So we walk we walk like stagnancy where we want to straddle the fence, mm -hmm. we want to be part Christ, but yet we want to be part world. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation, it talks about being lukewarm. So we can't have a lukewarm leadership. You either going to be yes. one way or you're going to be another way. Mm -hmm. You know, And that's what God was talking about. Because when I read this, I said, that is so true because her, her, her purpose was to assassinate the true worship. They don't want people following after yes. God. She wants people to follow her God, her idol worship. Oh, you, my God. Come on, come on. You know, and I that's what that. God wants. He wants us to get to the place where we have our eyes open and our ears attentive to his voice where we say, okay, God, I'm going to turn my heart towards you. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to walk in the authority you've given me because if I don't walk in my authority, the enemy going to come in and bring an influence in the house of God to destroy everything that God is building. So, in other words, the bottom line, we have to keep our focus on Christ. That's it, yes. You know, yes. Uh, and, 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 and at 2020, the name of our show, 
uh, Focus 2020, and we say 2020 because it's a perfect vision. We yes. get, as you have been a prophet, let, 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 let's go somewhere with this one, with the vision. Miriam, who yes. was she? Yeah. You know, uh, she was the sister of Moses and Aaron, and she is the first woman of the Bible to call a prophecy. Woo! Yes. Now yes. we're going to get with you. Now you say yes. the price is right. Uh, let's make a deal. Come on, let's yeah. play that. <laughs> uh, well, as a, a prophetess, uh, her role was related to God's messages, relaying God's messages. Mm -hmm. And so as prophets, we speak for God in the earth. So we're, we're the visible voice of God. We're that voice of reasoning. We're that voice that gives that direction. We are the ones that God uses at particular times and seasons to, to deter or to strengthen or to direct um, in order or um, whatever God is trying to get over it at mm -hmm. that point in time. And so uh, she was very prominent. She was used by God to be able to have influence. Prophets carry influence. That's good. That's good. And uh, she had that influence with God and also being able to have that influence with Moses. Because God, Moses was the one that God used to, to do, perform the miracles, to do the things. But she had an influence to Moses because he was listening to her, knowing that she had the voice of God as well. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. So that takes me to uh, being a prophet, uh, our dear sister Rahab. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, I, I've learned that God would take the worst of these, make it great, because... Anybody that, that read and knew the story of Rahab, she was a prostitute who lived in the, in the Canaanite city mm -hmm. of Jericho, and she became a worship of Jehovah God. So no matter how bad she was, she knew who God was. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, a uh, total opposite yes. of Jezebel. Yes. You know, and uh, uh, I know our time is getting down. Just, just give, give me a little bit on, the, on her pastor. You know, Rahab was the one who hid, you know, hid the two Israelite spies when they were going to check out the land, and God promised them the mm -hmm. land flowing milk and honey. So she hid the two the, the two spies that came to her house, and then they made an agreement with her that we. She said, "If you, when you come to the story of Jericho, save my house. You know, I want you to save my family." So they made a bargain with her that, "Hey, if you hide us and don't let them know we're here, and when we come back to invade the city, then we're gonna save you." You know, we're gonna we're gonna uh, you know cover your family and we're gonna get you out of here safely. Okay, man, yeah, this so. is getting so good. We got the last word. I know we got to, we got to, but I, I just want to speak on one lady. Her name is Mary Magdalene. Right quick, she was a loyal disciple of Jesus. She was a loyal disciple of Jesus. She was a loyal disciple of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she was gracious. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, we got to finish this. This is just this yes. is just too much. You know? <laughs> I don't know how your schedule will look uh, next week, but if you can, we got some. Uh, it's it's fast, but we can. Can you make it next I week? Oh, okay, we're going to finish this. Here. <laughs> well, family, you, I'm again. I'm Pastor Walter. Once next with me is Pastor Charles Emery. And uh, we want to just thank you. Pastor, give us a quick word before we get out of here right quick. Okay, we want to encourage you that if you are walking in authority in the house of God, be submitted to his leadership and his, his word. Allow the word of God to be your guide and, and your strength in times of weaknesses. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word of the airways. We thank you for our guests today, God. We pray that your word would go across the airways to touch the hearts and change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, you did a great job. You did a great job.